learning goal is the constant of proportionality. So that's going to be our topic, the constant of proportionality. And today's date is February 11th, 2-11. Okay, and make this table in your journal. And we'll remember how we were able to find out if these were proportional relationships by looking at equivalent ratios. Knowing that the top of our graph would be equivalent to x and the bottom equivalent to y. When you're finding the constant of proportionality, we're looking at the formula y divided by x. So, 12 divided by 2, Kyle? Uh, 6. Good. 24 divided by 4, Ellie? 6. And 36 divided by 6, Jordan? 6. Good. So, do we have a constant of proportionality? We know it's a proportional relationship, but the constant of proportionality would be 6. It would be 6. But that formula, the way that we found that, doesn't always work for us. So, in our books today for constant proportionality, they taught us to look for patterns. Again, we have a table that looks like this, x and y, and I'm going to pause for a minute while you get that down. And the first thing we're going to do is look at what the pattern is just for the axis. What's happening between 1 to make it a 2, to make it a 3, to make it a 4? What's the pattern that we see there? Yes, Kirsten? It's 1 by, up by 1 each day. Okay, so between here and here, we have plus 1. Now what I'd like for you to do is look at what the pattern is for the y, and as soon as you have it, raise your hand. And at the count of three, everybody tell me. One, two, three. Decreasing by 20. Okay, minus 20, decreasing by 20, exactly. So between 180, we have that it's going down by 20. So the difference between this method and the method that we taught using division to find equivalent ratios or constant proportionality is that you look for the pattern each line, and then the pattern for the y goes on top of the pattern for x. So the pattern for the y is minus 20, and the pattern for your x is 1. So your constant of proportionality is minus 20. Any questions about how you find that? Okay, and there is a label. If you look at example 1 on page 396, what would our label be for minus 20? Yes. Minus $20. And what's our other label? Ah, per day. Good. So make sure you do have your labels. Okay, we're going to turn the page to example 2. And if you look at example two, what's the biggest difference between what we just did on the board and what you see in example two? Yes? It's a graph. It's a graph. So we learned how to find the constant of proportionality from a table. Now we're going to work on how to find it from a graph. So let's look at step one. Choose any two points on the green line, such as 2, 5, and 6, 4. Now, you can't tell which line is green, can you? No. No. So we're going to go ahead and look at any two points. So look at the two dots on this line and the two dots on that line. Why would they have made that particular location a dot? What's special about that spot, Garrison? It's right on the intersection of a line. You always want to choose exactly the spot that intersects. All right, so the green line, and I'll help you with this, is actually the one that comes down in this direction. And then the other line is where you also have two points. So they have 2, 5, which is 2 seconds with a radius of 5 centimeters, and 6, 4, which is 6 seconds with a radius of 4 centimeters. And what are they talking about here? A circular design on an internet advertisement has two circles. One that's decreasing in size and one that's increasing in size. 
find the constant rate of change for the radius of circle 1 in the graph shown. Then interpret its meaning. So circle 1 is the green line. So we need to find the rate of change. And this is our first, first sample with slope. So rate of change equals, again in your notes, rate of change equals the change in this case in the radius change in the radius over the change in time. So we're going to put the numbers in. First of all, we have seconds of 5 and 4 on the points. That's our y values. So we've got 4 on the numerator, 4 centimeters minus 5 centimeters over 6 seconds minus 2 seconds. So how much change in distance was there in diameter? 4 minus 5. What do you think? 1. That's the change. So it's actually going to be 1 centimeter of change, and we're going to call that negative 1. And then 6 minus 2 is going to be 4 seconds. So let's think about what does that negative 1 mean to us? What's happening? Is it getting smaller or bigger? Smaller. So the size of the circle is decreasing one centimeter every four seconds. Okay. Now, if we we're going to simplify that into a decimal, you would take one divided by four and get 0 0.25. So 0 0.25 centimeters per second, and that's a decrease that circle is getting smaller. Any questions about that example? Okay, let's look at two. Use the graph above now and find the constant rate of change for circle two and then interpret its meaning. Circle two. So think about that for a minute. We are going to do it together. Let me get the door. Okay, there's a formula that will help you with this. Are you ready? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. This is going to help you find the rate of change. Now, for line two, we're going to look at the points that we can see that they gave us on line two. So, right now, the line two is the one that goes from the origin straight up. Tell me what one of the dots is. Raise your hand when you have noticed and you can read what one of the ordered pairs is. Cooper, what's, an ordered, what's one of the ordered pairs? Two, three. Does everybody agree? Two, three. Can I have the next dot that's right on an intersection? Maddie? Four, six. Can we confirm that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so write these down on your paper. And the first thing we have to do is label them so they'll work into our, our formula. So this is the x in the first pair. Do we agree? Mm -hmm. This is the y in the first pair. This is the x in the second pair. And this is the y in the second pair. So now when we look at our formula, we just have to substitute the numbers incorrectly. We have y2 minus y1. y2 is <laughs> 6 minus y1, which is 3. I want you to take a minute and do your x's, and then raise your hand when you're done. Okay, Jenna, what did you do with your x's? Well, first of all, x2 happens first. So what should happen first? So then 4, then 2. Yeah, 4 minus 2. All right? Then we can complete that. 6 minus 3 is 3. 4 minus 2 is 2. So we have 3 halves, which would be what? 
one and one half. And what's the relationship? What are we finding out? Notice this is positive. We have two circles in this advertising entity. One is decreasing, one is increasing. What is this telling us? Yes? The difference. Okay, so remember the green line was the decreasing line. What is this line doing? Yes? How many people agree? So that circle that's growing is growing by a rate of one and a half centimeters per second. And this is increasing. <coughs> okay, then let's look at the notes on the very bottom. And these are important to memorize. <coughs> If you have a line in your graph that's going up, that means your rate of change is increasing. It's a positive change. And you can tell that just by looking at the line. If your line is going in a downhill direction or down, that's a negative slope or a decreasing rate of change. This no change or zero slope is what we like our floors to be. When you walk across the floor, you like it to be flat, right? No slope at all. And so that would be a zero rate of change, a zero rate of change. So these three are very important to memorize. So go ahead and put a star by that in your notes. And turn the page. Definition for the slope as a choir. So here we go. Put your finger under the word and start with my voice. The slope M of a line passing through points at x1, y1, and x2, y2 is the ratio of the difference in y coordinates to the corresponding difference in x coordinates. So M equals, is this the formula we just wrote in our notes? M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And M is slope. So all those times that we've been wondering, well, what does slope mean? What, how do we calculate that? This is how you calculate slope when you have two points on a graph. Slope is equal to M which is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and simplify. There's another saying that we use a lot for slope that makes it kind of easy to see. Slope is the difference in the rise over the distance in the run. If you think about a graph, your y is far up or down it's going to go, and your x is the run, how far over in either direction it will go. So make sure you have all of those notes in your notes. Then let's look at example A. They've taken the formula, slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's the definition of slope. Please underline that for me in your notes. Definition of slope right here on your packet. Then they've given you two ordered pairs. They've given you 8, 6, and 4, 3. So the y is 6 minus 3. The x is 8 minus 4. So you're going to end up with a slope of 3 fourths. And that makes a line in a positive direction. Look at this line. Can we tell anything about our number right away? What's our solution going to be? Just looking at the line. Negative. Good. So again, when we fill in the points, we get 2 minus a negative 2. Are all your integer rules going to be necessary for this project? And negative 4 minus 2. So 4 over negative 6 would equal negative 2 thirds. And again, our slope is negative 2 thirds. So now we're going to put it all together. And you may work as a table. I want you to do a 3A and 3B while talking to your neighbors. And using the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, you can do this in the work section of your journal. I want you to do 3A and 3B. Stand up and you're done. Thank you.